forward. Hello, lovelies. Thank you so much for joining me here today again at Underneath Her Skin. So this month is lupus. It's May and it's Lupus Awareness Month. And today I am here with Ms. Nicole Kasbar, a lupus warrior who's going to be sharing her story with us today. Now, this will be a four-part series walking through the life of Ms. Kasbar and how she has managed from her beginning phases of being diagnosed with lupus all the way down to how she is living with lupus right now. If you are new to this channel, please like, share, and subscribe to Underneath Her Skin. This is where I interview various different people regarding their the challenges they go through in life, the ups, the downs, and the in-between. So please join the Underneath Her Skin family for more awesome videos. Thank you, Ms. Kasbar, for joining me today. How are you feeling? I'm okay, thank you for having me. I really appreciate spreading awareness of lupus to so many people out there. And I'm feeling all right, not too bad so far. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So we know as May, it is Lupus Awareness Month and we are, it's like put on purple day, right? So anybody, if you're watching, definitely put a purple heart in the comment section to show that you are in support of us, you know, basically promoting lupus and letting people know what this disease really is, okay? So Ms. Kasbar, if you can, please tell us in your definition, what is lupus? So lupus is, means so much for so many different people. But for me, uh, lupus means an autoimmune disease. Uh, it means my body is attacking itself, which is just a frightening thought. Right. Um, it means joint pain, inflammation. And basically, it just means I wake up every day and it's something new. I, I never know what to really expect. So I mean, if you want to think of the positive side, it never gets boring or dull, that's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, as a whole, it, it's um, I also, I guess, would use the word unpredictable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's another good word to use when defining what lupus means for me. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I do know, based on what I have um, read, that it is different for everyone um, and it can show up in different ways. Can you let us know, what were the first signs um, that, you, that you saw to, to, to basically lead you to the doctor to be tested um, to see what was going on? What were some signs? So let me just give you a little bit of my background first. Thank you. Um, yeah. I was a professional ballet dancer. Oh, wow. And um, I studied dance uh, professionally from when I was 11 years old. And uh, somewhere in college, I was majoring in dance at the Boston Conservatory. Nice. And I was noticing um, issues with the joints in my body. Mm -hmm. I never had like um, a broken bone injury or anything like that. It all seemed like injuries <laughs> to right. the joints in my body. And specifically at that time, it was all the joints on the right side of my body. And it was really hindering a lot of my performance and my, you know, uh, technique classes because I, I couldn't participate the way I wanted to due to Absolutely. like this inflammation and this pain. So at that time though, I just, you know, as a dancer, you ignore the pain and you keep going. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I did for many, many years. And um, eventually, right before I turned 30 years old, uh, you know, I had graduated college. I was dancing professionally in New York and in Boston. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. I want to walk when I'm 30 years old. Absolutely. I felt like all these injuries were just accumulating and I, you know, not going to be a healthy individual after a while. So I stopped dancing professionally and I started teaching. Uh -huh. The pain seems to have subsided somewhat, but periodically it would reoccur for no apparent reason. Mm. Um, it wasn't until a very stressful year in 2012 uh -huh. when um, my uncle was diagnosed with lung cancer. And keep in mind, my uncle was kind of like my father figure. Right. And my boyfriend son was in a diving accident and broke his neck and was paralyzed instantly. Oh, wow. So a very stressful year. And, um, you know, I, I was kind of like the, the go-to person. I was the one who kept everybody together and did all the paperwork and, you know, whatnot. So it was during that time that I really started experiencing horrible, horrible joint pain everywhere. 
-hmm. And um, I knew it was different when it was in my hands. You know, as a dancer, my knees, my hips, you know, that made sense. Right. <laughs> Didn't make sense any longer when it was in my hands. And when I went to see a doctor, I was like, you know, is this all dancer injuries or what? And he said, no, the, the, this sounds like something else, but I can't put my finger on it. Mm -hmm. And it was um, during a Nutcracker performance at my school, I was directing. In the middle of the performance, I had these huge lumps on my hands, on the top of both of my wrists, and my hands start to look like boxing gloves. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, something is wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> so I got to the last performance, and I went immediately to urgent care. Mm -hmm. And this was a couple of days before Christmas. Um, and I, that point they gave me a shot of something or other just to get me through the holidays. And they told me to see a rheumatologist as soon as possible. Okay. So I went and, um, the rheumatologist was like, this is very advanced. Did you really not have symptoms before, before. this? And I said, no, just old joint pain from dance injuries. And mm -hmm. he said, all right, we're going to run some blood work. And he goes, I have a suspicion it's rheumatoid arthritis, but I was already 40 years old. Right. And he said that was late for somebody to be diagnosed with lupus. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, sorry, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. And uh, he then called me on New Year's Day and said, I was mistaken. You don't have rheumatoid arthritis. You have lupus. Oh, wow. And he was shocked. And I, um, he said, very rarely is somebody diagnosed with lupus on the first try. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and he said, so it must have been something that's been lingering for a long, long time. And I just never went and had it checked. So right. that's why it wasn't, you know, um, I didn't get it checked, excuse me, checked out mm -hmm. until it was really, really bad. Okay. And I wasn't able to walk pretty much anymore at that point. Oh, wow. So during that yeah. time, and I know, thank you so much for taking us through that journey of how you actually got diagnosed. And I know um, a lot of people said before, they're actually normally misdiagnosed. And that's kind of what happened with you, right? Where? Yeah, well, again, this is the first time I saw this doctor and yeah. um, actually still looking at it. It doesn't seem like I was misdiagnosed. My symptoms are very rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. And actually my last, what, 10 years later, my last blood work actually is the first time it's showing a little bit of the rheumatoid activity. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, there's a crossover there. But I, yeah, the lupus part, he was shocked by too. Right. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say misdiagnosed. It's just, it was, um, yeah, that wasn't the first thought that came to his mind. Okay. And that could also be because it's not so um, widely, um, you know, researched or many people wouldn't naturally go to it at first, right? But tell us, what are some of the symptoms? You mentioned before you had pain in your knees and, you know, they attributed that to arthritis, but were there any other symptoms that you felt? Um, and I know you had the hives, if that's what you call it. I'm not sure. The rashes on your skin, maybe? Yes. Well, it's funny that you mentioned because I, for the longest time, was getting these strange, like, rash, like, thingies, I don't know what, on my chest, specifically mm -hmm. right here. And um, I, somebody thought it was high blood pressure. And, you know, I, I, I love the sun at the time. I was a sun goddess, mm -hmm. lay out on the beach for hours. And I would turn like this, strangely enough, an odd shade of purple mm -hmm. <laughs> when I'd lay out in the sun. They never got sunburned or anything, and I just enjoyed it so much. It made me feel so good. I never uh, attributed that to anything, but that's when that rash would appear, and I just wow. kind of ignored that as well. Um, in terms of other uh, signs of it, I mean, I do have asthma. I uh -huh. did have Epstein-Barr when I was in high school, yeah. um, and I found later on that Epstein-Barr tends to be a precursor for lupus. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I didn't, I didn't know that because nobody knows much about lupus. Right. Um, you know, I, I knew nothing about it. I have a whole family that's in the medical field and nobody mm -hmm. knew that. Mm -hmm. So it's not well known. And that's why Absolutely. this is so important. What you're doing is so important. Absolutely. Um, what are, what are some other, you know, instances that happen with you? Um, I know you mentioned the sun and I, I, I want you to talk a little bit more about that because that is a, a key factor and a very important um, 
situation that happens for individuals who are suffering with lupus or who are living with lupus, the sun is not really their friend or your friend. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, the sun's definitely not my friend. Um, I haven't had any, um, how can I wear this? Like any exacerbation periods or any flare ups due to the sun. Um, I still am allowed, I found out eventually, I'm allowed to take a little bit of sun very, very early in the day or very late in the day. Actually, that's good for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the sun in and of itself is this um, uh, photosensitivity for people who have lupus. And it could trigger the butterfly rash that, um, actually I have a little yeah. bit of it today, which I don't normally have. Um, I, I tend can't to tell. get this more so. good. Yes, <laughs> the makeup I can't work. tell. Uh, but yeah, I don't normally get it too much on my face. I have it mostly on my legs. My chest um, is where I usually get it. Um, but it it's funny because if I, am in the sun, I'm like learning. As I'm going, I'm learning. Absolutely. And I say it feels like I have like little pricks or like little, you know when black flies are out on the beach, yes. they land on you, they hurt. Yes. It feels like I'm covered in black flies. That's how I know to oh, wow. get out of the sun. It's like my little warning sign that, yes. okay, you've had it. Get out now, you're in trouble. So, but I also found out that fluorescent lighting oh. is a big problem with lupus patients and photosensitivity, and I did not know that. Um, so that's something I'm learning in a lot of places like where I work and whatever has fluorescent lighting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big factor that I'm trying to learn a little bit more about now myself. Okay. <laughs> so so basically, as you go through life, you're, you're realizing that there's so much more that you have to be mindful of, because I guess you know, as time goes on, you find different areas or different things that happen to you that you never would expect. It basically changed your whole life, right? And how you go about your day to day. Yeah, I mean, for ex perfect example is how I love the sun. I mean, I'd be out there for hours on the beach and now I have to be so, so careful. And, you know, that really did change who I am. I mean, that's one of my favorite things to do is be outdoors and in the sun. And on a day like today, mm -hmm. I normally would be out there. Oh, wow. Yeah. And taking a long walk by the water. And, you know, I have to be careful that it's not midday and right. not to monitor how Where long I'm out. Is the hottest. Exactly. <laughs> So yeah, that's changed. A, there's been a lot of changes <laughs> that have been made to my life. That's really stripped me of my identity prior to being diagnosed mm -hmm. with lupus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it caused you to go through a completely different career path. And that, that in itself, you know, could not have been easy, you know, um, I know that for the beach part, I, I know that um, what I've read is that, you know, individuals who have lupus have to wear, um, I think 50, what is it? Uh, is it SPF or? It's, or well, actually, or, I was 60 plus, yeah. 60 plus. I was, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that I mean? mean it varies from person. I, I don't really honestly find the um, sunscreen even helping as much. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a matter of getting out of the sun or covering up completely. I, right. you know, I even find like, like the top of my head and, you know, like my eyes, I feel it in my eyes sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's only so much sunscreen you could put on yourself. It's just at that point for me, and you know, that's it. If I'm going to be out there, I'm going to put the sunscreen on. But at that point, it's just better to get out of the sun is the okay. best option. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the mm -hmm. one of the good thing is that at some point your body tells you when enough is enough, you know? Exactly. People learn to listen to your body and that's something I'm beginning to learn. Yeah. <laughs> it took yes. me long, enough, but I'm beginning to learn to listen to my body because it does tell you what it needs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, so how did your family initially how did your family respond to you learning about this uh, disease? So it's interesting because I'm, as I said before, I'm the person that kept everything together and I was the go-to person and the yes. organized one. And my brother has multiple sclerosis and he has a very, very bad, he requires 24 hour home care and he doesn't move, walk at all. He can barely speak. And, um, when this happened, right before, 
before I was diagnosed, we were at an MS symposium, my mother and I. Mm-hmm. And I kept saying, gosh, this sounds so familiar to the things I'm experiencing. I hope I don't have MS because for mm-hmm. me, that was the ultimate, like, oh my goodness, I'd be horrible. Yeah. Um, so when I was diagnosed with lupus, <laughs> it was almost like, oh, at least it's not MS. <laughs> you felt <laughs> like that would have been really- better. Yeah, I mean, that's not a really good way to be. But again, because we saw my brother and how fast he progressed and how bad off he is. Um, But I don't think we really knew how bad it could get. And I just, I don't want to say I was in denial. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to defeat this. I could defeat everything else. And I'm going to attack this head on. And my family felt the same way that, all right, right, she'll get through this. She'll defeat it head on. And um, it took a little while before like everybody was on board with, okay, maybe she can't do this. Maybe we should lay off of her a little bit. Um, At first, you know, we were, you were always so able to do and we're so physical in the past and it was harder for them to adjust to it, I think, than it was. So, yeah. (laughs) It it, it It definitely... It definitely does show that, you know, no matter what is happening, it could, whatever condition or dis- disabilities or um, disease that an individual goes through, the family is also going through it, you know, and seeing the change and the transformation that is taking place. But, you know, hopefully um, we can all come to the point where we can get more knowledgeable about lupus and we can spread more awareness about this disease and how it affects individuals on a different level. So I definitely, I'm very, very happy that you are here with me and you're talking about lupus so that we can spread that awareness to everyone. Guys, if you are still watching, please like, share, and subscribe, comment. If you know or if yourself is living with lupus or you know someone that is living with lupus, please comment and let us know what are some of your challenges or what are some of the things that you have gone through that you find very much helpful. We would definitely love to hear about it and to share and spread the awareness of lupus. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video here at Underneath Her Skin. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kasbah. Thank you. You're very welcome.